Welcome to Heart Home Community's most recent Baldwinsville Community Update. I'm your host, Shelly Hoffman. Hey, Mayor. Happy December. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. Pretty good. How are you? I'm doing pretty well. For those of you that don't know, which I can't imagine anybody doesn't know who you are in this town, but this is our famous mayor for Baldwinsville, Dick Clark. <laughs> famous or infamous? Well, you know. <laughs> um, so, I'm happy to be with you. It's always, every time I can be on, it's, it's a positive. So... I definitely enjoy it. So I am going to bring up something that had the potential. Oh, no, we're not going there. The Cleveland Browns. Okay. Okay. <laughs> My Steelers are not are not are not um, doing awesome this year, but I still enjoy watching them. Yeah, that's the key. What's, that is, what are you going to uh, start me off with? Um, well, it had the potential to be bad. So I left town and this, I guess this is what happens when I leave town is you guys get really big gusts of wind. And um, and so Brian King actually had was the one that told me, and then I went on Facebook and saw that our beautiful Christmas tree, which was donated from you and your wife this year, right? Right. Um, it literally, was it the bottom of the tree? Like, it did it crack right at the bottom? or? But yeah, there's, there's, a, there's about a six-foot hole in the ground, and we have a, a cement box and a metal type grate that sits down and just like a tree stand you'd have at home but because we know the wind is a factor you have to get we try to get as much down in there as possible so there was about six feet and it snapped it off right at the ground level wow. um and people said the tree was really swaying back and forth you know earlier in the evening and uh it was interesting because i um uh, I checked with Chuck. He, Chuck sent me, uh, Chuck McAuliffe, our DPW superintendent, sent me a picture of the tree being down. So the next morning, I sent him a message and said, you know, do you think we can fix it? And what other calls did you have around the village? Because, you know, we've had houses get hit by trees and and so on. And he said, not, not one call for anything but the tree. And several people called that drove by and saw the tree down and and said, you know, your tree is down and you got to get it back up. And um, my wife and I were talking and it was, it, it's, it's a good reminder how much people are invested in things like the tree. Um, people were really not distraught, but, but upset. You know, it's like the focus of Christmas is the big tree in the middle of the village. And uh, so Chuck said to me, you know, Monday morning, first thing, we'll get over there and take a look at it, you know, and see what we can do. So he sent me a message at, I don't know, it was like 1030 on Monday. And he had a picture of the tree in the air being moved over. So, and they had taken some branches off the bottom to clear another five or six feet to put in the hole. And uh, he said by lunchtime, it was lit up again. And I thought that's, that was pretty amazing. And I, I sent a note up to the DPW thanking the guys and saying, uh, not that we don't expect them to be able to do that. I guess we took, sort, of, sort of expect and take it for granted almost that they'll, they're able to do those kind of things in a hurry. But I know that we didn't have the equipment to pick that tree up. They were, they were thinking maybe with the bulldozer, they could get under it and work it, you know, over towards the hole and get it up enough that it could get in sort of in the hole and then push the tree up. But, it wasn't working. And Chuck happened to look over at uh, the Timeless Tattoo Building. And they have a big boom type thing over there taking materials up to the third floor because mm -hmm. the renovations they're doing. So Chuck wandered over and uh, said to the guy, geez, we got a problem. Our Christmas tree is down. The guy said, oh, I saw the story about that. You know, I don't know if you saw it on Syracuse.com or I think one of the TV stations had something and he said, you don't think you could give us a hand. Do you? And he goes, yeah, give me about five minutes. I'll be right over. So he drove this big buggy over there. They hooked it up, lifted the tree up and put it in. And I can, I want, I want to mention the guy's name. Let me take a quick look. Um, cause, cause Chuck did send me the message um, of what the guy's name was. And I, I think it's pretty nice that um, the guy's name is Joe Mayer. 
from Mayor Construction on Burnett Avenue. Nice. And uh, he just felt it was a nice thing he could do. And I thought, isn't that what Christmas season's all about? I mean, it's nice that we have a lot of people that do that year round, but particularly at Christmas to, to think that the guy probably sensed the feeling that probably most of the community had. So the tree goes in, I put it on Facebook. I send it to Syracuse.com and say the tree is back up so they could put that as the topper of the, of the old original story. And, and the comments from people, oh, thank God, it's wonderful, I'm glad it's back. And it's, you know, it's like a, a, an old friend had been hurt or something. And so it, it, it really was my Christmas gift this year, the, the feeling that I got from the feeling that the people in the community had t- towards something that we do. Um, so when people say, well, does anybody really care if there's a tree or not a tree? Yeah. Pretty clear people were invested. And uh, so I, I can't thank Chuck's crew enough. I think that you've probably been around long enough and a lot of other people who have been here a long time come to expect the DPW to do things that sometimes you don't aren't sure they really can do. Um, but, but those people are invested in our community too. Most of them live in the village, right around the village. Um, and so, thankfully, the tree is back up. Now, I noticed I didn't see your tree on the road. No, my tree did not make it through that storm either. It's it's laying up on the um, the roof. Bry's going to check to see if there's any roof damage, because obviously, as the owner of the building, I got to make sure there's no damage to the roof when the tree fell. But my son's coming home from college, and I told him I was going to go up on the roof and take a look. And he said, absolutely, Mom. He's like, I'll be home tonight. He's like, I'll go. He helped Brian put it up this year. Okay. And it withstood two really bad uh, windstorms, but it did not make it through that night. So we'll see. Uh, you know, we're talking one, about maybe not put it back up. Yeah, there probably was one giant gust that came and took care of both trees at the same time because, um, you know, we had a we have a couple bows that hang on each side of this of our steps, you know, above, and they both they they were on the ground and they blew off, but. Yeah. You know, I looked around the neighborhood and all, all people's Christmas ornaments and decorations were still there. Um, I know that people across the street have some blow up stuff, you know, that yeah, yard ornaments. And, and uh, one of them was in the neighbor's yard. So they took them all in and so they wouldn't have to look for them the next morning. Uh, but most of the decorations are around the neighborhood. And I will add, the village looks great. I mean, yeah. we are decorations. There's some people that really... Uh, you know, that strip coming from your house down to the four corners is beautiful. Uh, there's some there's some individual streets that are just like eight out of 10 houses are decorated. It's like a wonderland. Um, our village, again, has has exceeded expectations. So that is Absolutely. you're always looking for me to have good stuff. So that yes. was that's about as good as it gets. Um, but I have another good one. Um I had a phone conversation this morning with Jeff Rogers from the Angry Garlic, mm-hmm. and he confirmed that he has purchased the Lock 24 restaurant, and it will become a smokehouse barbecue restaurant, hoping maybe to open it around Memorial Day. Mm-hmm. Um, they're going to really renovate the whole thing, redo the whole inside. It's got that island bar in the middle, which I never thought was great for a restaurant, good for a bar if you were mostly a bar, uh, but when you go in to eat, you're right at the bar. I just didn't think, and it ate up a lot of space. Um, so I, I think he's going to completely redo it. He's talking about probably having a bar out on the deck. Because um, I said we are, we are super excited, and you know, and I had talked to the the company that was trying to help sell that. You know, obviously at the end of the day, Jeff had to go down to the courthouse and go through the rigmarole, but he did it. I mean, and that just shows you the dedication he has. It's going to be a great. Um, restaurant. I mean, everything that Jeff does for the community turns out well, but I was eating at the Angry Garlic the other night and uh, and he did confirm that. And just, again, Blarney still would have been nice. There's other restaurants that were in the race to get it, but to have Jeff Rogers, who is so dedicated to Baldensville, yep. to me, you couldn't ask for, for a better better place to go in there than something that Jeff and his his um, wife are going to run. Really, really works out well. He sounds excited. Um I know somebody said, I saw on Facebook last night, somebody goes, the for sale sign's gone off the lock 24. 
And then somebody said, I heard it might be a barbecue. Maybe, you know, the, it'll, be, it'll become the angry barbecue. Yeah. And so I thought, well, I'm going to maybe Jeff didn't want anybody to know it quite yet or something. So I, I sent him a message and I accidentally butt dialed him. And <laughs> so at like 830 this morning, I'm, I got Jeff on the phone and uh, he said he wasn't holding anything back. I mean, he's excited. Um, I said, that just adds to that whole boating connection. You get people lined up along that wall and they, they can walk right down to the, to the closest restaurant and sit on the deck and watch the boats go through the lock. And mm-hmm. it's just going to be a nice re-addition to our village to have that back. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. So now I've got two very good things for you. Yes. Um, I wanted to point out, Oh, I, I want to wish Claude Sykes a very happy retirement. Claude has done it at the end of this month and uh, he'll have more time to hunt and he'll have more time to go visit family and see his grandkids in different, different parts of the country. And uh, Claude's been around quite a while. He's, you know, he was in with the village for a long time and, and uh, has been supervisor for a while and I wish him nothing but the best. Uh, he's got, Claude's got great stories, um, and I hope, you know, I hope we see him a lot during his retirement. Um, not bad, but just reminding people that the COVID has upswing has forced people to wear masks. Um, I think I think what's happened is the restaurants and stores have decided, and <clears throat> businesses have decided it's easier to have employees wear masks and people coming in wearing masks rather than ask people to see their vaccination record. I mean, that's, it's like an extra employee you'd have to hire to oh, take yeah. care of that. And uh, so this, I just hope people can, you know, it's a, it, currently it's a four week deal um, to the middle of January. And that would get us through the Christmas rush. Um, you know, the, the, the numbers are up at the hospitals, uh, which is a concern. I mean, it, it's kind of crazy because we got rid of nurses because they didn't get vaccinated. And now we have an emergency because we don't have enough nurses. So more COVID is put, it's kind of this cycle of spinning stuff that I don't know who's right and who's wrong. And I'm glad I don't have to make those big decisions, but. Well, I know Allison who owns uh, BU nutrition, you know, she made a post that it's not an easy decision for the business owners. I mean, she, she made the decision, like you said, for they're going to um, have the mask mandate. Everybody coming in. I know Tay- um, uh, Taylor said she saw it. Most people you know, saw it because Allison's big on social media. But it's not they saw it and just decided that's the easy way out. I mean, a lot of those businesses really stopped and, and thought about it. But how, how do you do that? How do you stop everybody at the door when you're, you want to be busy? It's the holidays and say, you know, show me your proof of vaccination. You know you're going to have people that... Um, resist showing, you know, you have people that um, just dealing with the public, like o- overall, everybody's been great, but you know, the public as masses, you know, it only takes, you could have 7,500 people go through a place. One person can ruin the whole experience for everybody. It's just the way yeah. the world is. So, um, but I, I just want to throw that out, you know, that out there. It's not, it's not an easy decision to, as business owners, you know, to decide which way you're going to, which way you're going to do it. And, and our business owners have done great. Dealing with it. So hopefully it's just another little hiccup, you know, a little bump in the road that they'll get through and maybe we'll get into January and things will look better. And uh, some of that will be relaxed. And, you know, once you get into January, then you can start talking about springs not too far away, you know, because you get through February, middle of March around here ends up being fairly nice weather. Um, I think the outside experience that some of the restaurants have had has worked very well. I know it has for the garlic. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you go by there six o'clock uh, on a Friday night or Saturday night, and those tables outside are packed. So that that's worked well. It, it, that's that's one of those things that's worked out really nice, whether there was COVID or not. I mean, I think people love being outdoors on a nice, you know, seventy-five degree evening and you know, why be cooped up inside? So hopefully others will be going towards that. Um, I have a couple of thank yous that I want to get in more positive type stuff. 
Um, in November, um, Jack Laporte um, was a lifetime resident of the village. His dad was a teacher. Uh, he lives on Virginia Street, and he came in to, and addressed the board about school traffic, uh, the intersection of Virginia and Oneida Street and Virginia and Elizabeth Street, how he didn't, he didn't necessarily point finger at kids, but, you know, that's the bulk of the traffic at, at, at the times he's talking about, just sort of ignoring stop signs and uh, makes it tough for the people who live on that street, you know, if you're thinking about crossing the street or whatever, but it's scary that you got cars coming from four different directions and if people aren't going to stop. Some, someday somebody's going to get hit pretty good. So he, he addressed his concerns and uh, Lieutenant Lockwood uh, talked with him, had eventually talked with him about it. And uh, they had talked about putting up stop means stop signs underneath the stop sign, which would just reinforce it. People would read that and go, eh, you might be talking about me. Um, he, he says, first of all, he was saying thank you for the chance to come in and, you know, to be able to address the board. Um, but since he thinks since the signs have gone up, he's seen a sign of an, uh, some improvement. Not everybody stops, but seems like more people are slowing, at least slowing down and, and making an effort to recognize there might be other cars coming. Uh, and he thinks that's a win. He's hoping it'll continue to get better. And uh, thank you again for your continued efforts to make our village safe and one of the best communities to live in. So uh, it's always nice when somebody has a concern like that, comes in and addresses it with us, and then you hear from them later and they're, they're happy with the results. Um, you know, because that's not always the case here or anywhere. I mean, you can't always make everybody happy. Um, then the other one I got today from Ruth Troy, thank the folks in the community for supporting Canton Woods this holiday season. The calendar and wreath sales both went very well and the craft sale was a huge success. The community support is tremendous. Nice. So, you know, I don't need any Christmas gifts. <laughs> you know, I hear that kind of stuff. I mean, I, I get goosebumps and, you know, I, I feel good because we can't solve everybody's problems. I mean, there, there are things that happen um, that, you know, that, that, that we can't fix. Um, we try as much as we can, um, but when you get people respond and sound like, you know, I mean, Jack Laporte knows a lot of people in the village. I'm sure he's had conversation with people um, about his situation and to be able to go hear him telling people, hey, I talked to the, the police and the village board and we got some action, you know, I mean, they, they can't have police there every day, every minute stopping and watching every car, but it's having an impact it makes me feel great. And I, and I'm the fact that we support the senior center, we know that, I mean, they've been doing it. Um, they, they're still operating. They've never not had masks since they opened back up uh, full speed. And, uh, but people are getting through, they're getting to play pitch. They're getting to play pinochle. They're getting to play poker. They're uh, playing bingo. Uh, the craft stuff's going on. The book club. Um, I know the uh, the art class is still going because I get notifications that you know Miss So and So just signed on to your Zoom. Um, so they have the class in the building, but they off also allow people to Zoom in because some of the seniors have gone to Florida for the winter but they didn't want to miss out on the art class. Again, makes you feel good that we have something that people are connected to, even in the middle of the winter from Florida or wherever they are, they're still connected to Baldwinsville. So it's really nice going into the holidays. Um, I, I want to take an opportunity to wish everybody a very Merry Christmas, uh, Happy New Year. I'm guessing that you and I probably won't connect till the first week in January. Yeah, probably. You know, because people will be busy. Um, I am hoping that you're able to hook up with, with Santa and Mrs. Claus again. Uh, there is that possibility for folks. They should pay attention to see if that's going to happen because we've only got, what, a week and a half till Christmas. I know. I know. I know Santa and Mrs. Claus are kind of busy, but um, yeah, that old guy, that well, old they need time for those, those kids in the community. That I know. Yeah, the old guy gets a little busy this time of year. 
I know that. <laughs> Conversation, he tells me how busy he gets. Thank God he has those elves to help him. So, are you all ready for Christmas? Oh, no, I'm not even, I'm not even close. I bought three things, but I'm taking them all back. Oh, so, shit. technically, I'm at like negative three gifts because I have to take the time to take three things, three things back. But I, um, my son's coming, you know, you're talking about things that, that make you happy. You don't need gifts. Jordan coming home from college. I have no idea. He's, uh, he's taking his last final today at two 30. That is more exciting to me than, than waking up Christmas morning is just knowing he's here for a month. Uh, you, you hear it throughout the course of your life. I can't wait for my son or daughter to get home from college. And, you know, in my head at, at 14, I'm like, really, I can't wait for him to go. <laughs> and, <laughs> Well, you're allowed to have that too. <laughs> so, so I'm 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 excited for that. I think once he's home, I'll get more in the Christmas spirit. We're gonna go cut down a real Christmas tree this weekend, which I have never gone and cut down a tree. We've had a couple real trees, so it's those moments that kind of have me excited for the for the holiday season. Now, how many uh, trees do you have up in your house? I have five trees in my house. So <laughs> we went by one night and we saw three of them. Yeah, I, I had a friend who, who sent me a text and said, why do you have four trees? And I texted back, I have five. He goes, hold on, I got to make a U-turn. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Well, you know what? One thing, it, one thing I would have guessed ahead of time was it doesn't take you much to get in the spirit. No, I, I love it. And I do want to decorate the outside of, of, of my house. But now I'm kind of glad with the wind that came through that I, I didn't. Our flag came down. So there's something with the way my yard is set up. Uh, but our American flag actually flew flew off as well. So Taylor had picked that up from the, the yard. So I do. It may not be this year, but next year I'll definitely start decorating some more around the you know, because you leave my house, you go down the street and it's absolutely beautiful coming down by Mohegan Manor, Pizza Man, Angry Garlic. Yep. So I don't want, uh, Tina Solomon told me last year I was the dark house on the hill. I, I need to. <laughs> nice need reputation to... to have, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's all I have for you, kiddo. Uh, as long as we can, I, I also want to you know hats off to the Volunteer Center and the Christmas Bureau because, um, I think Monday was the last day that they accepted people donations and stuff. And they, they look like they got a ton of stuff. Um, I don't know how many people they're taking care of this year, but I'm guessing it's in the mid 150 area, that type I of think, thing. Yeah, More than that, I think. Yeah. yeah. So that's, I mean, it's, it's not good that we have that many people that need help, but on the same token, isn't it nice that, if we do have that many people that need help, then we got help for them. Yeah. So, and there's no excuse if anybody knows of anybody that needs help to not be able to find somebody that would do something. Every church in the village would do, is helping. Um, you know, the volunteer center would be the best place to contact. Um, it's not too late, I don't think, for to get some help. Um, the food, you know, I think the food banks have been going crazy with people. Yeah. Uh, needing food. Well, let's help them. I'll make Christmas at least a nice time to give somebody some hope for the future. Yes, absolutely. And and I'm sure you've seen it as well, different posts on, on Facebook, maybe someone that didn't want to sign up for the Christmas girl or didn't want, you know, to put it out there. Um, you have other people who just know that they need assistance and, and help and they're, they're putting it out there. So absolutely. Well, I probably won't talk to you. Hopefully, you you know, I do talk to Santa, Mrs. Claus, and you, and you catch that because that brings a lot of Christmas cheer to our community and laughter. Those two make me laugh. <laughs> and I was very excited to see the tree back up. I actually, I think it was your wife who posted the picture and I stole it and threw it on HHC as well. So everybody knew the, you know, that, that it was going back up. And yeah, and it I, was, I was amazed at how fast they were able to get it up. Um, but they had four or five guys working on it and, you know, Chuck made it a priority. And, and I, I, I'll be honest with you, I'm, I'm guessing the guys were ready to go seven o'clock in the morning. Let's go fix that tree. You know, that, that's the kind of the way they take the attitude they have. Um, I did see the brush truck go by. So they are making a last run at, you know, the last uh, Chuck had said, I'm not sure we're going to do anymore. I said, there, there are branches that people have put down. 
you know, come out at the road from the moon the other night. Not not great big ones, but you know, all of a sudden you get a pretty good pile of smaller branches, and and uh, it makes people feel good that their yards cleaned up for the winter. Um, I'm glad that we take that approach and um, hopefully we have a nice mild winter as far as not having to have streets plowed too often, but our guys are ready. I know Chuck's got the salt is ready and the trucks are ready and um, bring it on. <laughs> no, 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 no. Take that back, sir. Do not say bring it on. <laughs> what, do you mean, what do you mean bring a lot on? <laughs> I'm teasing, obviously. So, but <laughs> tell, tell uh, Linda, I said Merry Christmas, and I will talk to you after the holidays. I do have one more show between now and the holidays. Brian May is going to come next Thursday and give us an update on what's going on with him. So that'll be my probably only this and then that show before the for the holiday before the end new year. Next, so. next week Thursday. Yeah, the twenty third. Him and I okay. are gonna gonna talk at um, always, eleven o'clock. I always enjoy listening to Brian. He's he's a great supporter of the village. Uh, as his in his seat on the county ledge, him and, and Ken Bush both yeah. have been very supportive, and it, it means a lot for us to know that that we have somebody to speak for us when the county starts talking about where do we do things, and and Baldwinsville's name comes up. You know, well, I like problem. I like that uh, Ken and Brian are both available. I see yeah. Ken Bush at a lot of networking things here locally. He'll come and just you know give us a quick update on what's happening and. Obviously, Brian. So it to actually know that they're out and about, and you know, Brian says all the time he gives out his cell phone number if people have questions. So I don't know if it's the right cell phone. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> it's the right cell phone. Well, have, a good, have a nice Christmas, and I hope you yes. have a lot of fun with your kids. Nice to have your son home and and enjoy the the month the month you have. Yes, thank you. You too. Talk soon, Mayor. Goodbye.